Auzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Today you are going to approach the mysteries surrounding the mission of the angel of death named Azrafil. When Azrafil was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was integrated into the circle of angels who are physically the greatest. The angel Jibril also falls into this category. The angel Ruhu as well. To imagine the greatness of the angel Azrafil, if we gathered all the sources of water in the world to pour them on his head, no drop would trickle down to his ear. We can therefore understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed him with an extraordinary physical form that impresses men. However, apart from his extraordinary physical form, the mission entrusted to him is much more capital. In fact, one can observe in the fourth sky, the angel Azrafil sitting in front of a tree which overhangs him. The particularity of this tree is that on each of its leaves is mentioned the name but also all the information relating to each living being on earth. Before collecting the soul of a person, the angel of death first consults the leaf of the tree, which holds the information related to this person. Seeing the angel Azrafil checking the data, one has the impression that he is handling a connected tablet. The tree is his reference, because on normal time, the leaves are green, but as soon as a person has a disease that must kill him, his leaf automatically turns yellow. It's at that moment as Rafil consults the leaf to see all the informations. He will know the day and the hour to the second of when he will take the patient's soul. This is how he watches over it until the time comes to carry out the instructions as the Lord commanded him. In this management, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed him with a power that allows him every Thursday evening to walk on every square meter on earth, in the depth of the waters and all the spaces above. As isolated as a place may be, he will visit it with his light every Thursday evening. Also, you should know that Allah has given Azrafil the power to collect several million souls at the same time. Hence with the mystical powers and spiritual capacities that he holds, if he must take for example 1000 souls, his right wing releases thousand rays of light, where each ray is intended for a soul. However, when the light ray arrives at the level of the person, this individual does not see the ray, but rather the angel of death. If the person is destined for paradise, the light ray takes on the appearance of a beautiful being and the soul is gently collected. On the other hand, if the person is destined for hell, this ray of light, when it approaches the person, turns into an arrow. At that moment, the person sees a monster holding an arrow in his hand that is about to shoot it into his chest. From this reality, we also observe that every time the angel of death recovers a person's soul, there are two angels standing on his right side if the deceased is destined for heaven. Conversely, when the deceased is destined for hell, the two angels stand on the left side of Azrafil. Thus, when he recovers a soul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to the person the presence of these two angels. At this precise moment, the deceased realizes that Azrafil is not alone, but accompanied by two angels and whose position defines his future destination. Once the angel of death collects the soul of the deceased, he gives it to the two angels who live with it. Hence, when the person is a happy chosen one from paradise, the angels bring the soul to the celestial intermediate spaces where it must be received. In the same way, for the damned, the two angels bring a soul towards the intermediate spaces intended for him. However, the angel of death stops at the level of fourth heaven where the tree is located and lets the two angels continue their journey with the souls gathered. If all this organization and mystical power seems surprising, it must be understood that it is not the power of the angel Azrafil, 
but a manifestation of the supreme reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, the angel of death uses the power of the name of Allah to collect the soul of a person. However, it is not a divine name common to all, but for each given individual, he uses a specific divine name. This is why in Ghaib or Invisible World, the deaf angel is classified among the angels who knows most of the divine names. He can nevertheless use the same divine name to collect thousand souls, for example. Sometimes even two thousand souls, but if it happens that he uses the same divine name to collect two thousand souls, he must change and use another name of God. Sometimes, when collecting the souls of five different people, he uses a different divine name for each person. For particular categories of people, he uses a prayer on the Prophet, peace be upon him, to collect their souls. These have a milder death. For others, he can also use a Quranic verse. Those people also have a soft and peaceful death. We see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted the angel of death with such a grandiose mission that it would be difficult for a human being to execute it properly. In this manner, the Lord granted him an inayatu rabbaniyu, which is a ball of light which allows him to travel in any space without any restriction. Through his tajaliyat or mystical process of multiplication of his being, he can intervene in front of millions of people by removing their souls at the same time. It is therefore clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed the angel of death with immense rank and power. However, despite the eminence of his mission, Azrafil one day testified to the Prophet peace be upon him in these words. If God had not assisted me in this mission so dangerous, I would be unable to take even the soul of a mosquito. Through this testimony, he wanted to make it known that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who attributed to him such a spiritual power which allows him to intervene in the different worlds and that each time he finishes his mission, he returns to sit under this tree in the fourth heaven. This is how the Lord organized Azrafil, associating him with the power of his names in addition to the angels who accompany him during his interventions. Most of the time, when he performs his missions, the angel Azrafil is also accompanied by the angel Jibril alayhi salam. However, Jibril, by intervening, does not move because God recorded the photograph of paradise under his right wing and out of hell under his left wing. These are the two particular categories of wings. In this organization, the person destined for paradise can see his future destination while dying because it is the angel Jibril who deploys his right wing. Inversely, a condemned soul can see its future destination in the abyss when he dies, because it is also the angel Jibril who deploys his left wing. This is what brings this sustained vision of the dying when he points his eyes to the sky, when in truth he is seeing another reality. Azrafil therefore has this assignment and is one of the angels who, when they go on a mission, take with them several celestial services. If the latter don't accompany him physically, they do so mystically or spiritually. But while always referring to the organization of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his absolute power. We have reached the end of this presentation. All these revelations are drawn from the lessons of our honorable guide. خطب الأختاب الكبير مولاي سيدي محمد الشيخ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته